They say you should never meet your heroes. But if meeting them is bad, then inviting them back to your shop and seeing all your project cars has to be worse. Fortunately, I love making bad decisions. Steve Dynan is America's most successful BMW tuner. His cars were powerful, refined, and reliable. He took a break from building cars to dedicate himself full-time to racing, but he's back with a new company called Carbon Auto Works. He's one of my heroes, and for some reason, he agreed to show me how he puts together cars. Well, it is an absolute honor to have you here at my shop. I've known of your name and your brand for a long time, and it's been an inspiration. Even though this isn't exactly uh, European, yeah. I, I will say there's one anchor point that we can relate on, and it's that's from a BMW. Yeah, <laughs> I, I but, recognize that. So it was an all-wheel drive then. Yes, and you mentioned briefly that you did actually touch rotaries at one point. I did. I also used to work on rotaries. I worked at a place called the Mazda Works in Campbell, California in 1977, 1978. Wow. And okay. they also worked on BMWs as a sideline. They mostly worked on rotaries. And I fell in love with the BMWs and I quit my job and started dining. Okay. So that's how I got introduced into BMWs in a Mazda shop. The rotaries were so bad, you're like, no, I'm going to go over BMW. No, I mean, <laughs> and they were cool. It's just that I love the refinement of the BMW. And, and that's kind of what I'm all about. I mean, I, I'm the kind of guy that likes, look, I, I build a race car, I buy a factory race car, and I go to the racetrack and I race it. But for my tuner street cars, I like them to be nice cars. Yeah. I want to get them every day and have them start and pass a smog test. and idle and be comfortable and have the air conditioner work and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so what I want to show you is this car here. And there's, there's a reason why. This, is, this takes a, a lot for me to admit. This is a 1,000 horsepower three-rotor RX-7. Yeah. This is what kind of got me where I am now. Yeah. So I've been known for taking this car on the street. And in Michigan, it's basically a street car. <laughs> How do you get traction with it? it that's my big, that's a, you know what? I never knew that too much power is actually a big problem. Oh yeah. And so that, that was actually what really fascinated me is that you mentioned you brought something. Yeah. And it's an actual street car, but it also makes basically the same amount of horsepower. I want a street car that's as refined and nice as the stock car, just 25 to 50% faster, something I can drive every day, but has no compromises of durability or drivability or emissions or anything. It's 900 flywheel horsepower, so okay. it's, it's less, you know, it's probably 150 or 200 less than this thing. Yeah. But it's also got all the cowling converters on it and does that on pump gas. The BMW M8 competition puts out over 600 horsepower stock. Adding power to a big luxury car like that risks subtracting refinement and day-to-day -day usability. But Carbon's promise is that you can eat your cake and have it too. Obviously we already established this is a very comfortable car. It's like a luxury car. Yeah. So you'll sweet. be shocked at the racetrack how quick the car is and how well it handles for given how nice it is. Yeah. And one of the arts to that is people have a tendency to lower the car too much and then bottom it out against the bump rubbers. Right. And the bump rubbers are an integral part of a suspension system that most tuners just don't completely understand. And we tune them a lot in race cars. But how they're supposed to be tuned is we're driving on the road like this, the bump rubbers don't touch. I believe that. That makes okay. sense. Okay. And then that rides really nice. But then when you roll the car into a corner, the bump rubber engages and it's a progressive spring and you can double the spring rate. You're using the bump rubber as a progressive spring. Right. Oh my God. That I way it supports never... the car in the corner to make it stiff. But when you're driving in a straight line down the highway, it still rides nice. Now, most people saying, think they're saying. a crash barrier. We yeah, actually yeah. use the bump rubber as a tuning tool. That's amazing. I never, I've never thought about that. You have to change the shape of the bump rubber and the durometer of the rubber and tune it for the travel that you have. Yeah. It's a lot of work. We, we have a shock dyno. You ever seen a shock yeah, dyno? Yeah. Okay. We put the spring rubbers on the shock dyno and we measure the force oh, on it and the God. hysteresis. Yeah. One of my arts on both race cars and street cars is making really good handling cars that also ride really nice. And in race car terms, that mostly means just taking bumps well. Yeah, so I might be oversimplifying, but does that mean if accounting for the bump stop, you could use a slightly softer spring? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then it sinks into the bump rubber, and that way on the low-speed corners, the car's soft, so it breaks and puts down power. Yeah. And then the high-speed corners, it gets support from the bump rubber, and you get your cake and eat it too. That is smooth. Isn't it? Yeah. So on the engine, all we did was uh, really big intercoolers, really big heat exchangers to get rid of the heat, yeah. and software with a lot of boost, and it went up 220 horsepower, and it makes 800, almost 890 horsepower. Yeah, this is such a smooth car for everything you've modified. 
so I've seen this car on the street. I, I could I could almost fall asleep in the passenger seat with how soft and comfortable it is, but yet this can also go to the racetrack, and that's that's something I want to experience. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty quick on the racetrack too. I think yeah. you'll be surprised. Well, it's a little different than the streets we were just on, but we are out at Willow Springs, a great place to really let this thing unwind. And I really would love to see more about what's under the hood. It's a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, with a hot V from BMW, and it comes with just over 600 horsepower. All right. And we added uh, larger intercoolers to the engine, and then two really large additional heat exchangers to get rid of the heat in the intercoolers, because the biggest problem is when you make a lot of power with a turbo, it makes more heat and that robs the power. Well, okay. I felt it yesterday when we, were, when we were getting out of the car, I could feel the heat being pulled out of the car too, oh, yeah. so that was, that was impressive. And it has a huge electric fan in the front that pulls air through it and even stays on after it shuts the car up to take the heat soak out of it. Well, you know what? I'm surprised you don't have a laptop in the passenger seat, but that's because of my background that I'm always tuning and driving. Yeah. But in your case, this is just wrapped up, good to go. Yeah, this car hasn't had a computer plugged into it in over a year. We built the computer with adaptation ranges where the computer has the ability to learn based on the fuel quality. So you could put pump gas in, it makes eight and a quarter. You put yeah. race gas in, it makes eight ninety. You put methane, it makes nine and a quarter. It doesn't require any software changes. That's awesome. Well, you know what that means to me? That means I can just jump in and go. Just jump in and go. I don't have to worry okay. about it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to take you up on that. All right, <laughs> let's do it. It's kind of funny because I'm wearing a helmet and it's for safety, but I, I don't, it's, it's not that type of car. Oh my God. All of this is just very in touch. Steve was really selling me on the suspension and the things he's done to upgrade it. And I am, blown away. This is one of my first times ever driving this course and I feel not overconfident. I just feel like I am listening. I can feel, I can hear the road. The car is talking to me. It's not like a fat car, even though it is. Look at all this elevation change, all these tight turns. And this car is meant for like grand touring. It's a big car. And yet here we are maneuvering a very small track with ease. I don't feel like that like lumbering body roll of the car. I, I just feel the, the suspension doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> you know, I have a theory about mankind is that I think that almost every great thing we ever did we really didn't understand how hard it was. And if we really would have understood all the pitfalls and all the you know, danger of it, we probably would never start. But I think it's our, our, our naivete is kind of our saving grace as far as <laughs> feeding our creativity. But because he's into it now, he'll see it through and he'll learn a ton. And, and that's a good thing. And that's, you know, I think that's what makes us people, honestly. If, if it's not obvious throughout this entire episode, I am geeking out with Steve. Like that is an honor to be able to speak to not just a legend, you know, because you hear that he's really smart and knows all these things, but to have him engage and, and show me what sort of knowledge and experience he brings to the table. It's awesome to have you guys watch these episodes, but for me, I get the benefit. I get to become a better tuner seeing what the sort of focus that Steve has on this car and, and this handling and suspension. I am, I'm flabbergasted. There's like, there's a, there's a straightaway up there, but I was like, I don't even want to do the straightaway. I want to just, I hooked this thing back and forth because it was just like so planted. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it, what I felt was not what I see. That no, it, it defies logic because it's so big and everything. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I said this this small, tight course actually showcased one of the things that I, I want people to know is, okay, big horsepower numbers. I can make big horsepower numbers, but refine. Like that, that is, that is the, the, the secret sauce to your, your formula is how refined it is to handle that power. Yeah. And so that's why I think, I think this, it would have broken the car if, if it was any less of a car. Glad you liked it. Well, Steve, I, I can't thank you enough for letting me drive the car. Yeah. I appreciate Anytime. it so much. Anytime. If, if you want to come up and, and look at the race car and go over some stuff on your car, I'm happy to help you with that too. I will take you up on that offer. Thank you so much. <laughs>